All right, folks. My name is Audi. Welcome back to my Witcher 2 playthrough. We are in the inn. I have just looted them of all of their relative values. I mean, they're value they're valuable to me. Oh, excuse me, my throat. Greetings, Margot. What can I get you, fine lad? What do you think of the commandant? Mr. Laredo is a great man. A great man. He looks after us, helping like. Taxes are just as they should be. We're all pleased. He governs the trading post and we're all perfectly happy here. Yeah, uh, so that was sarcasm. Geralt, I'm going to respond. Sarcasm. Excellent. You're a model citizen. I'll be sure to inform the commandant. Yeah, he gets it. Bah. Do I need publicity? I'm a humble woman. I know what's good for me. The reader's our leader here, and everything's all right. All right, take care, you lunatic. Might as well read about Margot, since we just found out about her. Margot, the proprietor of the brothel, was a hard-nosed businesswoman. Yet she shepherded her flock of girls with almost motherly care. They always do, don't they? It's the type of person who's in charge of a brothel. They're always motherly in their characteristics and, style. and personality. No, I want no, the stuff. Tell me. Don't open the door. No! Stuck in the door! In the morning. Let's go through the door and stay. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. And I made it through here. Alright, store items. I would like to put uh, this away. No, no, I want to sell that. I want to put this away because we can't sell it. It is a quest item. Item cannot be sold or stored. So this is going to be point one weight that I have to carry around for the rest of my freaking life in this game. I mean, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. What is with this inn and disappearing fruit? All right, so I could either do fist fighting or dice poker before I go talk to my buddies. Let's do dice poker. Do my eyes deceive me, or are you Witcher Geralt? I am. What can I do for you? My cousin from Vizima claims you're good at dice. Sorta. If the word gets out that we have a good contender, Better players are likely to show up. The stakes will rise. Maybe even I'm a dancer or a sender for the games. So, will you play? Yeah, sure. Sure. Great. We only play for fun, but the Zindrab fancies himself a master. I won't play any old challenger. Show us what you can do, and who knows? I might sit down with you. Sorry, I have to mute my mic sometimes to cough. I'm getting over a bit of a chest cold. Still, still, it's lasted for like three weeks. Oh, I get to choose, huh? Let's play Cass. He's got the uh, the wimpier name. Always 10. Here we go. Low on the dice for good luck. Oh, I just kind of set them down there, but it worked. Look at that. Good roll. Really good roll. I've got like a ton of sixes here. I'm not going to bet anything. I'm just going to bet five. He has he resigned. That's a good decision, my friend. I won almost nothing. The luck was in. But I want a chance to win my coin back. Nah, not today, buddy. Care for a game? Yeah, you bet. All right, let's bring it up. Roll the dice. Went a little bit too hard. I think the softer die roll seems to give me better luck. I got two pair, and he has... Three of a kind. It's not looking good for me. You know what? I'm going to go for the full house. I need a one or a five. I did not get either. I lost. Fair enough. No problem. You lose. Yes, I lost. Let's play again. Care for a game? Ten... And roll the die. Mmm. Not so good. I have a really terrible roll. But so does he. He only has a pair of threes. That's it. I have nothing. But you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get a pair of sixes or three of a kind for sixes. And let's bet up a little bit. Did I get a six? I did get a six. I lost still, because he had three of a kind. No, he has two pair. Same difference, though. I still lose. 
You lose. I know, I know. Let's play again. Never again. I don't know. My luck is bad this game. My first playthrough, I did way better. I always won by the second time. I'm not sure what's happening now. My luck has to turn around, eventually. This is a terrible roll. And he has... Oh, good lord. He's got two pair. What do I have? I have one pair of nothing. One crappy pair. Pass. I pass. Let's play again. You lose. It's distressing, you know, because there's nothing you can do about it. If you have bad luck with your roll, there's nothing that can be done. You just lost that money. That's why I'm not really a huge fan of gambling in real life, uh, depending on the game. Games that require skill or fun, games that are pure luck, I just frustrate the hell out of me. What do I have? A pair of threes? That's it? And he's also just got a pair of threes. Well, damn. It's going to be a race to see who can get the most threes. I bet I'm going to get the most threes. There. How about that? Sure. You can raise. That's fine. I'm going to get the most threes. Damn it! What does he get? Oh, damn it! Such rotten luck! Absolutely terrible! Yeah, you lose. Oh, you bastard. Can't forget. You son of a biscuit. Urgh, give me my money. Give it back. I'm starting to tilt. I'm getting mad. Um... This is a crappy roll! It's not good! What does he have? He has a pair of twos. Yeah, and a pair of twos. Okay, so it's worse than my roll. But that doesn't mean anything yet until I actually win. He raised. He's very confident. His luck is a lot better than mine. Oh, damn it. Just two pair. That's not going to be enough. Oh, I won! Oh, thank goodness. I lost a lot of money on that. You win. All right, but we still have to play this guy now. What do you want? Oh, whoops. What's going on here? No, 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 no. What I'm, I don't want to talk to this guy yet. Not now. So. Left hook. Watch out for the left hook. What do you want? I wanted to play dice. Care for it. Shall we? Let's roll. Ah, uh, all right. It's not terrible. Two pair. He has three of a freaking kind. Urgh, three of a kind. I did not get... Yeah, he has a higher three of a kind. But at least he didn't lose much, you much money. I lost my... I learned my lesson there. I what bet a small... Uh, he probably should have raised me higher. Did he get some more money out of me? I think I would have taken the bet. Um... That's not so good. Not so good. He's got a pair of threes. He's currently beating my pair. Let's not bet so much. He raised five. That's fine. Oh, no. I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. This is tragic. You lost. Like, the laws of probability you... should dictate for a game of that I win we more than I am rounds? currently winning. Right? Am I wrong about that? I, I took statistics in high school. Come on now. Alright, it's not terrible. It's not great either. He has... Uh, he's got one pair of twos and not much else. I've got a pair of fives. Nothing else. I'm going to bet big and hope that he also bets big. Yep, there we go. I have to win this. I have to win this. I have two pair that's not good enough. Oh, thank Christ. Uh, all he needed was another two and he still would have beat me. Yeah, my luck is not so good. You won. Care for a rematch? No. Try Einar Gorzel from the Craftsman's Gorzel. Beat Einar him, Gorzel. who knows? Maybe even Sendler will agree to play you. Okay. Thanks. Sendler, huh? Left hook! Watch out for the left hook! Now we can talk to these oh. guys. Are you fighting, brother? Yeah, you bet. Who's up next? Sorry I didn't get that He's dialogue. He's a like you, brother. Good for starters. Put your coin down. So, what'll it be? I thought that he would uh, tell me again, but... Oh, well. I'm ready. Gentlemen, let the dance begin! Left hook! Watch out for the left hook! 
this is super easy. I'll just breeze through it. It's almost a shame how easy it is. They could have made this more difficult. They could have made them pop up really fast and make a longer series of inputs. Uh, they could have even used the entire keyboard instead of just WASD. As it stands, it's... It's so easy that... I don't know, but it looks cool. It is fun to watch. Oh, I totally screwed that up right when I started talking big. <laughs> he just walks away. Wouldn't want to get on your bad side. Mm -mm. Up for another, brother. Yeah, but only because he rhymes. Who's up next? Paul Bransell, known as Flippass. Strange name. Really? Does everything backwards. Sleeps in daytime, drinks before he eats, and tells women to get dressed before he plows them. Flip us. Show us your orange. So what'll it be? Yeah, I mean, of course. I'm ready. Gentlemen, let the dance begin. Wait till he drops his fucking guard. He looks big. I wish you could see his health. Kick the plowing bastard. No way to know my progress here. Oh, there we go. All done. Hey, champ. What? I can tell you're a serious contender. Far too good for this drunken riffraff. Believe you me, I know what I'm talking about. So? I don't know you. They call me King Ziggy. Because I pay like a king. If you want a taste of fame and riches, look for me by the inn in the evenings. I'll take you to the right place. Okay. That was right, fucking Ziggy. poetry. Up for another, brother. All right. No more rhymes. No more rhymes now. I mean it. Who's up next? I knew you'd end Anybody up fighting each it? other. Who's that? Tidy Tib. The bastard eats honey straight from the hive. Drinks for four, and some say he can hang a bucket full of water from his cock. You better get a solid coin pouch ready. So, what'll it be? Yeah, let's do it. My heater just kicked on, and I'm near the heater, so it's, it might be kind of loud. Uh, when I talk, you might hear it in the background. That's what that is. Cool. This is a, a de I'm more ready. decent Gentlemen, than Gentlemen, let the dance begin. Let the dance begin. Here we go. There we go. Kick Same move. Bastard. Same move again. Let's spice it up a bit. Maybe miss my first one. Yeah, there we go. A little fancier. Pretty cool. Punches lights out. Whoa! Damn. Wouldn't want to get on your bad side. Congratulations! You dropped some of the toughest brawlers. Well done. Tournament's over. All right, thank you. I got some money. I also got a formula for superb leather trousers. Are they better than the current trousers I have? I don't think they are. No, they're really not. They might be superb, but they're not good. Oh yeah, this guy. Come in. I can make no sense of this relic I have been entrusted. The gods have not granted me understanding of it. Perhaps Providence grants you luck. And then I shall give you this prize. Perhaps you will make better use of it. Okay, so... It seems, right, like this guy's supposed to give you something if you beat him in dice poker. Or maybe even if you lose or beat him another a certain number of times. I have not been able to figure out how. Oh, wow, he raised right away? Jeez. This guy's a high roller. I have... Whoa! Calm down. I'm talking to myself there. I have not been able to figure out how you get this relic. I don't think it's in the game. Oh, he's got three of a kind. Oh, shoot. Three of a kind, huh? You know what? I'm going to try this. And I'm not going to raise. Oh, shoot. He raised a lot. Please be on my side, Lady Luck. Oh, yes! Oh, lucky. Yes. Booyah. That makes up for my losses from before. You are not lucky, quite, but... traveler. But not enough. 
Yeah, see? It does not look as though the gods decree that you should bear up. Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do to get him to bear we his burden. It's just the tease. Yeah. That's all it is. A big tease. How's my weight load right now? Ooh, we're really close. Yeah. Really close. All right, let me store some things here. If we go into uh, crafting, I'm going to store things that I know I'm not going to need for a while. I wouldn't mind hanging on to a bit of cloth. Let's put away maybe, you know, like 80 of them. Uh, the diamond dust, I may need a bit of that in the near future. Let's put away most of it. Drowner brain, it's an alchemical ingredient, so I'll hang on to that. Elemental stones, put all of it away. I'll hang on to that. Iron ore, I'll hang on to. Leather, we really don't need this much on us. Uh, oil, I'll hang on to. Red meteorite ores, put that away. Twine, we do need some twine at some point. We'll hang on to some of it. Alright, and I think we're good here. Punches lights out. Let's go up and talk to my friends. Wait. Find and challenge Bartholomew Bargy to an arm wrestling match. Defeated three of four. Okay, he's the fourth opponent. I get it. Ha <laughs> Damn, that was close. Innkeep! Vodka! Tris Merigold. Lice eat me, but you are a treat to behold. Uh, just a little pale. Magic takes its toll, but I'll be all right. Good to see you in your beard again. Can somebody tell me what happened? You set off a month ago for Zoltan's wedding. Blood got fucked. There will be no wedding. <laughs> Did you hear about Foltest? Rumors travel faster than the wind. Winds and rumors. I want to know the truth. I want to know how Foltest died. And the dragon, was there really one there? And who rules Temeria now? Calm yourself. Dandelion, calm down. You'll choke on your liquor. All right, uh, where should I start? Let's start with, yeah, sure, the dragon. The dragon. Well, the dragon appeared, and that's all I know. But where did the lava let's get a dragon? We heard it fought on their side, huge as a barn, they say. Yeah, right. Dragons don't usually take sides. Maybe its lair was nearby, and it just felt threatened. If you hadn't driven it off, Foltis might not have taken the castle. Maybe. We'll never know for sure. I really like the color of uh, Triss's hair in this game. I don't know. Is that weird? It looks pretty cool. It's like a... A scarlet and or a, an auburn. I don't know how to describe it. Ha! <laughs> the Bregan rigs broke off the engagement because some limp prick put it about that I joined the uprising in Vizima. My would be popular law refused to let a rebel firebrand join the family. And keep, where's our drink? It was like this. We got to Mahakam a week after the Grandmaster died. Bob Zoltan, an absolutely grand double with a pair of Garibaldi crack owls, and as a gift for Eudora, a jade stone as big as my fist. You were broke as a joke by the time Dandelion threw me a bachelor party at an establishment called the Tight the Lane. Lane. Next day, we nice. went over to the Breckenrigs. They welcomed us in, sat us down, and proceeded to discuss the superiority of Mahakaman mining know-how over any other. And that went on until dinner. Just when I thought I'd learned more than I ever wanted to know about mining, they served the soup. You could have held a pin drop. Old Breckenrig rose and he says, A real dwarf works a mine. Not chase his fame on the battlefield. You'll never believe this, Geralt, but they served duck blood soup. It was as black as tar. They must have dropped lumps of coal into the pot. Eat, Breckenrick says, then proceeded to slop two full balls of the shite. Old goat. Hope his mind caves in on his head. I think it's funny how they made dwarves have Scottish accents in the Witcher universe. Given that probably the most famous dwarf of all, Gimli in Lord of the Rings, he had a Scottish accent. Tolkien has really permeated all kinds of, of Tolkien-esque fantasy, you know, elves and dwarves and whatnot. They're all very similar to Tolkien's versions of them. Lurido said you're working with the Scoia'tael, Zoltan. I have done many things in my life, Geralt, but I have never stooped to banditry. The Scoia'tael don't consider themselves bandits. But I am no Scoia'tael. Since when have you worked for Roach? Hey, nobody said a word when you went out to save Temeria from the Grand Master and his mutants. Relax, Dandelion. I was just asking. Do what you want. You're an adult, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. 
That wasn't very supportive. Laugh away. At least I decided to do something constructive. You used to spy for Redania, now you're spying for Temeria. Some might call you a traitor. Ever tried to live off of poetry alone? The truth is, I'm a citizen of the world. As long as I don't serve Emperor Emir, I'm not doing any harm. Leave right. me, Geralt. You play the spy a bit, get bored, and drop it. You know how he is. Oh my gosh. It's funny how they talk about him, like, he just has no control over himself. Does this move? Does this move around a little bit? I think it does. I'm talking about this border around the dialogue option. I don't know. Triss, you're the expert on Tamaria. Tell us who's in charge now. It's chaotic and getting worse. The old families are fighting for supremacy, no holds barred. Baron Kimbolt and Count Merivel, I bet. Among others. After the assassination, while Geralt was in the dungeon, the Lords convened in a field near Lavalette Castle to choose a new ruler. Three days they debated, and it looked more like a bazaar than a meeting of nobles. Except the trade was in court and ministry positions, spheres of influence, royal privileges. Ha! <laughs> Humans! In spite of several duels and two poisonings, no Yikes. king was chosen. Civil war was in the air. Where were the mages? Aye! <laughs> Where were the grey eminences of this world when they were truly needed? Oh, Zoltan. They weren't invited. Neither Despite. was I. But if not for their intervention, or rather that of a few influential sorceresses, Baron Kimball would have taken the throne. I was invited to sing at his court once. Afterwards, he refused to pay me, and the food was awful. No way I'll stay in Temeria if he's crowned. That's a good way to judge someone, by their food and service and hospitality. Did they ultimately not resolve the food, anything? Not hospitality. No. <laughs> it ended as usual. Sadly, John Talis remains our only hope. Ah, the victor at Brenna, and Foltest's most tried and true field commander. Hmm. And during the deliberations, he was several days' march from Lavalette Lambs, with an additional 2,000 armed men in tow. He's to keep the peace until a rightful monarch is chosen. He could find that ruling is to his liking. Natalis is a soldier at heart. He's not suited to rule, and I don't believe he even wants to. He's got the army behind him. Which is why he can guarantee peace. Why, a tenuous one, sure, but that's always better than civil war. Besides which, he's deeply in debt to a dwarven bank in which Philippa Eilhart as sorceress holds significant stake. Alright, that's enough politics. I think I've heard enough about politics. Foltest's killer lay in wait in the tower, where the Lavalettes had hidden the royal bastards. He was well informed. Wait a minute, what were you doing there? I was protecting the king. After the first attempt, Foltest began treating me as his lucky charm. He ordered me to be at his side during the battle. The dragon separated us from the rest of the army. The killer disguised himself as a monk, a blind one at that. He let Foltest greet his children, waited until I had walked off, then cut the king's throat from ear to ear. Who did he flee? Jumped out a window into the river below. Jorvith Skoyatel were waiting in a boat. It was planned. And you're chasing him because he murdered the king? I was accused of the murder. I need to clear my name. Besides, I looked him in the eye before he escaped. He's a witcher. Then some brave Temerian soldiers showed up, piled on me, and knocked me out. I guess the Christ takes away those 8,000... Save yourselves, good folk! The beast attacks! His gesticulations are Someone rubbing me the wrong way. Yeah, we just saunter on over. There's no rush. No, not at all. Oh, there's the mage that Marco's nits were talking about. What sort of sorceress are you? A lot of good you did. Can't you hear me? Why didn't you help him? He's alive, isn't he? The beast nearly pulled him in the water while you stood staring like a calf at a shit-covered clover. Good saying. Watch your words. Where's this beast? Ask her! Geralt. Ah, I guess we knew each other. <laughs> oh, look here! Birds of a feather! I want this guy. I'd say, I've heard of you. 
Master Witcher, this is foolish. The beast near pulled Sozek into the depths, and you're simply chatting with this damsel. Hmm. All right. What happened? I came to Flotsam to kill the Cairn. Cairn? The monster that has effectively blocked the port. A moment ago, I had the good fortune to see it in all its splendor, but the local folk scared it away. Good fortune? You hear that, Sozek? That was some good fortune for well, you. Well, no one's helping him. Why is the beast in the port all of a sudden, eh? Summoned by the witch, perchance? To see it in all its splendor. Jesus. All uh, right. Um, I'm thinking... I'm going to do Axi and boost my Axi sign because we've got a check Sozek coming up that I really want to pass. Good. Lay him inside somewhere. Also, we get to show off our magic skills to this uh, sorceress here. Right, we've dawdled enough already. Come on, lads. Let's go. Now Axi is level this? two. I was ready for a rumble there. Shut it and come on. Nice, we got the ringleader. I apologize for interrupting, but I am Louis Mertz, the Chancellor, and I am chief person in charge of all matters related to monster hunting in Flotsam. It is in this capacity that I must inquire if you're willing to attempt to resolve the problem of our so-called Cairn, the beast that now blocks all trade traffic on the river. So, Witcher, are we willing? I usually work alone. I was here first, and I'll not relinquish this contract. My way or the highway, as the locals put it. Fine. Your way it is. You must contact the merchants on the waterfront as regards any rewards. Madame de Tanserville has, I believe, already conducted some preliminary negotiations. That I have. In that case, don't let me keep you. Triss, how long must I wait for you to introduce us? Sheila de Tanserville, advisor to Queen Zulika of Kovir. Kovir is a long way north. True. I had my doubts if the Cairn was worth the journey, but those were dispelled with what it showed today. Here to hunt down some ingredients? Triss Merigold, sharp as ever. You're thinking that... Troll eyes, ghoul venom, virgin's blood, all those disgusting... Yeah, good luck with that virgin's blood. Take from dying species. To throw into the cauldron at Sabbaths, right, Triss? Oh, she's joking. Absolutely. Virgins are a dying breed. Oh my. Your sense of humor seems to be intact, too. But enough of these pleasantries. Tell me, Geralt. You saw the tentacle. What do you make of it all? The beast must be huge. Maybe inhabited one of the Pontar's tributaries before, hunting animals. Then it grew for some reason, and hunger drove it to seek fresh pastures. And on the Pontar, it found trade barges burgeoning with obese, slow-moving merchants. You're partly correct. Cedric claims the Cairn emerged from the northern swamps approximately one month past. Cedric? An elf. Formerly a Scoia'tael. Strange bird. But he knows quite a bit about the area and its living wonders. I need to look around, find out a few things. Hmm. An investigation. Witcher's rituals, extracting secrets and such. More or less. I'll talk to the merchants about the reward, pay Cedric a visit and get back to you. You'll find me at the inn. I've rented lodgings there. On the upper floor. You know the inn's also a whorehouse. Thanks for the warning. Find out what happens on the pier. Go ask the mason to take you as his apprentice. Say something. Go on somewhere. Is there anything for me to grab over here? Surprisingly not. Can I go down? Also, no. I believe there's someone I can talk to over here on the left. Is it this guy? No, it's this guy. Ever seen the river monster, the Cairn? I have, but I'm not the talkative kind. All right, then. Are you the kind that scares easily? Huge beast. Still Guess the water so. With its tentacles like a water wheel. Dead fish all around it. Must be venomous. I like that they give you the different options so you can work towards leveling all of your three methods of persuasion, you know? Intimidation, persuasion, and uh, axi. It's cool. They give you plenty of opportunities to get all, all three of those done in Chapter 1. Hardened Leather! 
what do you know? That replaces the one that I wasted on this jacket, because I've decided I'm going to buy the the Shia, whatever it's called, the other armor. All right. Hang on, let me get this bag. Cool. Is there anything up top? Actually, there might not be. Huh, strange. I think I left something on the bottom floor. Oh, around this way. I wonder what these meteorite ores are going to be for. I'm betting uh, runes, like crafting my own runes, but we'll find out. I really like that offer from you. Greetings. This guy has a quest for us. Whitehead one. I have an offer. All right, speak, you. speak up, speak up. Greetings, white-haired one. I could do with your help. You see, I'm looking for a certain formula. I'm no herbalist. I know who you are. I'll be straight. Find the formula, and you'll earn a sizable pouch of orums. All right, why not? Sounds good. What do you want me to do? The formula is in the hands of a certain shopkeeper. Can't go and see him yourself? He deals in incense. One type is particularly... popular. I think what he sells is harmful, yet I need the formula to prove it. The scoundrel knows that and is very cautious. Yet I assume you, as a witcher, have your way? I'll see what I can do. Alright, get the recipe for the poisonous incense. Will do. <laughs> Let me get a save in there and let's talk to this guy. Oh no, I'm not talking to a freak. Wait a minute. Be off, or I'll call the guards. Seriously? Ah, uh, people. What do you want? Heard you have a problem. Uh, this is the guy I wanted to talk to. If only we had just one. Highways washed out, forests full of bandits, a river beast blocks the port, and tolls are to rise. Can't help with the tolls, but the monster's a possibility. A sorceress said the same, but we've yet to see any results. She's asked me to work with her. And who's to pay your wage? That's what I'm here to discuss. The sorceress was to manage a loan. You can split that reward if you wish. No way, Jose. Well, we're managing it together now, so as I see it, you should double the reward. <laughs> you jazz. Now, if I succeed in axiing this guy, you actually get an ability that reduces the cost of anything merchants sell. It's huge, so you absolutely must do it. You'll double what you offered Lady to Tanzerville, because that's what the contract's worth. Please work. So Yay! Yeah. I assume you to be professionals and worth every last copper paid to you. It's a deal. And now my axe eye is level three. tell me what you know about the beast. You're the witcher, damn it. I've no knowledge of these things. Yeah, fair enough. Who could tell me more? That plowing elf, Cedric, most probably. He's supposed to know all about monsters. Where can I find him? In the village, outside the walls. Now leave me be. Leave me? Where's this mysterious merchant guy? Hey, buddy. Let's trade. Let's do the thing. Let's, uh... Sell him my stuff. Although maybe this isn't the best guy to sell it to. Yeah, that's fine. Let's just sell it anyway. Now we already bought the weapons from him. We could still buy this armor. I'm gonna do it. It was very expensive, but oh well. Oh, look at this. What's the Yuskith room? Damage 7% and bleeding? Ooh, that's good. That's very good. I actually want to learn how to craft those myself, probably. But now we've got this armor. Well, Now let's uh, equip it. And enhancements. I'm going to go ahead and stick on just these two armor enhancements, I think. What does this do? Resistance to bleeding, 1%. Nah, I'm just going to go for the armor enhancements. Just use these cheap ones, I think. There we go. Now it's at armor plus 10. Awesome. I think this 
I'll sell that. And, uh, I don't think I need to do anything else here. Nah, that's fine. Quiet, woman. Artist at work. You might want to stir it. I don't stir. I work the material. Alright, this might be a good time to... Uh, search the neighborhood, you know? And loot everything that I can. Just so I know what I'm dealing with as far as materials go. Grab this. Grab the timber. Amethyst dust. What's that over there? Aha. Anything in the barrels? No. Oh, my medallion needs to recharge. Hang on. Good stuff. Oh, we got a halberd. That's cool. Craftsman's district, apparently. Hello, no, now we're in the non human district. Hello. What do you want here? More elemental stone. Something I can't loot. And nothing else. It shouldn't take too long to clean out this town. It's not too many houses. And again, I'm doing it early on so I know what I'm working with as far as crafting goes because most of the materials you're going to get in this entire chapter are going to come from here. Like right here in this town. And most of the orins you get probably until you start farming monsters to sell the parts. Already been there, I think. Or have I? Is that a dead pig? You alive? I think it's dead. I've definitely been in there, right? Hope that guy's drunk already. In the middle of the day. Looks like a craftsman's house here. Carpenter or something. Find someone your own size. Sorry. I think he's mad because I bumped Find into him. Someone your own size. Let's make our way up this way. Oh, we found a book. The Grand Triple. We'll read that later. Can't go in there, huh? So, uh, let's trade. I'm gonna sell all this stuff and the junk. There we go. Already doing decently on money, even though we bought this expensive armor and wasted money crafting things that I don't need to craft. Oh, hello. What brings you here, White Wolf? Make yourself at home. Ah, you know please. me. Do we know each other? I've heard, or rather read much about you, in the letters of the Rivian Diaspora. Well, nice to meet you. Einar Gausel, fundamentally a trader in old curios, although I also concern myself with a non-human community. Okay, uh, first of all, can we roll some dice? I want to play dice. I think I'm in this person's all way right. behind me. Shall we? <laughs> Always raise in the beginning, because why not? Not a good roll. Oh, and he has a very good roll. I think I'm going to have to pass on this one. 
we'll pass, and then we'll play again. I think that's the only way to really right. get a one up on people. I want to is to mind if I have a look. just give up when you don't think you have a good chance of winning, and that's lame, honestly. Like as soon you know, you practically know you're gonna win, usually right from the very first roll. There's always a chance, I suppose, but look at that. Of course I'm gonna win. Oh shoot. His roll is actually also very good. There's a chance that he'll win. So, let's do it. I'll bet up a little bit. Just so I can make the money back that I lost. Oh, look at that. Full house. There's no way he can beat that. Awesome. I got 20 orange. That makes up for it. I'm lost! Hand over the coin. Here. Yeah. But I'll not play you anymore. All right, jeez. So, who is up for a game around here? Sandler's the best. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, we're gonna have lots yeah. of books to read later. Careful with those swords. We're just gonna loot this place and then we'll talk to him again. Oh, dwarven enhancement. That's cool. Thought so. Another stone medallion. Mind if I have a look at your books? Take your time. No hurry. Books in Flotsam? I wouldn't have thought it a profitable enterprise. Hey, many foreigners come through here. Sometimes they buy books, sometimes they have tomes to sell. Yesterday, for example, Lady Sheila de Tansevo purchased items for a sum equal to my yearly dealings. Did she buy anything interesting? De Vermis Mysteries, the Exeter Treaties, complete and unabridged, plus a very expensive volume I'd rather not mention. I should add, as generosity must be praised, that she made a donation to the community Specifically to the Fund for Widows and Orphans. The non-humans in Flotsam are organized? We aren't. But we aid each other as best we can. I mainly collect taxes and announce the Commandant's dispositions. That'd make you a prime target for Yorveth. <laughs> You're correct on that account. He's warned me many times, and I've explained the need for my function to him just as many. Both in vain. It seems we've agreed to disagree. Well, the sword is his calling, the pen is mine. Hence, no meeting of the minds. It wasn't always this hard. Turned sour when several elven lassies disappeared. We lost our trust in the humans and the Scoia'tael ceased trusting us. Did they turn up, the women? No. I believe Necker's killed them. Hmm. I remember Moral of the White Hands. She and her lover made a beautiful pair. The White Hands? What are the White Hands? Uh, so you could change your hairstyle here. I'm not really interested in it because I think I know what these look like. And I prefer... I'm currently wearing the Rivian style, which is like a high half ponytail. And I like it. Oh, whoops. The gods I do I still want to kind. do this. Hey, he will play dice with us. Drowners, a textbook. For Initiates of the Order of the Flaming Rose, Magic and Power, Necros in the Mist, uh, the Kairin, a monograph. I feel like I should buy this, but I don't need to buy it now. Uh, yeah, there's nothing that I need need to buy right now. All right. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. See you later, my friend. Everybody calm down. So how Let's trade. Macho, macho man. I wanna be a macho man. Not sure why I said that, I'm sorry. Nothing to go in here. Yeah, we can't do that. Lots of town square. Greetings. Mind if I take a look at what you have in stock? Certainly. You're welcome to. I'm Fioravanti, a merchant. Not to be nosy, but weren't you hired to kill the Kairan? I've had my fill of this place, and I'll be glad when the blockade is finally lifted. 
Lorita won't let you traitors out until it suits him. Seems he needs you here for some reason. What's that supposed to mean, damn it? Is he organizing some international trade fair? I'm a subject of King Demavend. And I tell you... Demavend's dead. Ah. Uh. Now if you don't mind, we uh. get down to business. We can roll dice with him. Why would I want to do that? What does he have to trade? Crafting diagrams. We can make amethyst dust, elemental stone out of a gargoyle heart. That's not going to come up for a while. Essence of water out of diamond dust and amethyst dust. That could be useful. Leather. We already know about that. Studded leather. Arachnid oil. Gadwall, hangman's venom. So he's got some good uh, formulas here, but I'm going to come back to that. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh no, I'm trapped. I got trapped between the kid and the and the wife there. I know I'm freaking you out. Just let me leave. Let me leave. No. <laughs> Please. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. <sighs> you guys know I can't leave, right? Damn it. Can I get out through here? What if I, like, uh, scare them or something here? What if I take my sword no. out? Out of my way! Come on! Out of the way here. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is nuts! There's no, there's no way! Oh, for crying out loud. Please. No. Oh, thank Please, Christ! No. That was crazy! Alright, let's loot his house and then I'll maybe talk to him. I don't think he has anything to say right now, though. I should come back to him once I have completed the, uh, the quests that I have to complete. Also, I don't think we can get into this, right? Yeah, a key is required. What do you do? I'm the Royal Castellan. I look after Flotsam's provisions, fortifications, and so forth. So if I exterminate a monster, I need to see you about the reward? Indeed. You could start by filling in Form H-12 and taking it to... I don't need to. I've got immunity. Ah. Well, you'll find the notice board out in front of the inn. And good hunting to you. Any idea why Lorido put a price on the troll's head? Commandant Lorido has Flotsam's welfare in mind. Mm-hmm. But the troll tends to the bridge, keeps it in repair. Not likely. To start with, that's a dangerous beast. In addition, he pays no taxes on the tolls he collects. Now, I think I know how to get this key. And it's also the reason why I'm not going into Lorito's mansion yet. There is another box just like it, and I'm hoping that if I get the key for this one, it'll also open the one in Lorito's mansion. I don't know this for sure, but I want to test it specifically for this playthrough and see if it's possible. Uh, then other people will know. I mean, I'm sure it's on a wiki or something somewhere. I just don't like Lotsam's to use wikis got a garrison. We don't need that much. A I do really like to just figure it out myself. Um, I know your kind. So, you know, I'll end up playing the game through multiple times. If there's really something that's that crazy hard to figure out... Oh, I've already looted this place. I don't have to go in there. So I think this is the guy. Welcome to my The incense modest. guy. I need a certain formula. But what does he sell? What do you deal in? All kinds of incense. For meditation, rejuvenation, cooking, making medicine, rituals, whatever you require. Right. So here's the thing. It's really good. It's a really good idea to buy everything important this guy has to offer. For instance, I'll buy this because it's worth one Orin. Uh, everything this guy has to offer before... Ooh, this actually looks like a good diagram. Before he closes up shop. So that's a lot of Orins that I, ha I gotta put down for this. Yeah, a lot of orange. My goodness. Probably gonna hold off on all of that. So, don't do this quest until you buy everything from him, because he will close up shop. Although, if you talk to these guys... Are you a witcher? I am. You've got to do something about that filthy business. The crook selling the poison is going unpunished. I think he's just selling incense. He said incense. that very aggressively. Incense is only a cover. People get addicted to it, lose their senses. It's like fist tech. You must shut down that shop. Close the shop and the citizens of Flotsam will reward you handsomely. I'll talk to the trader. Talk to the shopkeeper about his dubious 
herbs. Dubious me. Witcher Geralt, known also as the White Wolf. Am I that hard to distinguish from the locals? Taller warned me you'd be catty. Taller sent you. Indeed. I'm on business here, so he insisted I give you a message and a package. Uh. What's the message? I quote him faithfully. Listen to Roach in every plowing thing, because though he's a prick, he's also a patriot. Vultures already circle Foltest's corpse, but I'll manage. Get the sons of bitches and keep your head cool. P.S. You really fucked up at the castle. Give me the package. Take it. It's a weight off my mind, I tell you. Ah, I wouldn't make much of an agent. All that secrecy and nerves and cursing, not my style. Good luck to you. I'm off to tend to my matters. So what's cool about this guy? Godspeed. Give my best he to will not be here oh, if you let Taller die in the first Witcher game, if you, and you've imported your Witcher save. I think that's really cool, actually. All right, so it's getting time to end the episode soon. I'm going to catch up on some journal reading, so feel free to just skip to the next one if you don't want to see it. Let's take a look here. So, the Cairn. Indeed, it was as people had said. The unlucky victim lay on the pier. A riled crowd surrounded him and was com commenting on the events. Among the onlookers stood the sorceress Sheila de Tanserville. The Witcher and the Sorceress exchanged but a few words before she asked Geralt for help in hunting down the dangerous beast. First, they needed to identify the species. An elf named Cedric was said to be the most knowledgeable about the local wildlife. Uh, poker face, the dwarf proved to be good company, and Geralt played with genuine pleasure. Oh yeah, this is just about... okay. You like the scent of incense? Then listen. Geralt met a scholar at the harbor. The man claimed that one of the local shopkeepers sold incense producing poisonous smoke. He could not prove the murderous trade without producing a recipe for the incense. Geralt promised to get the, ma the man a recipe for a tidy sum of orange. He did not sound like he was on the right side of things, did he? He sounded suspicious. Mm, and then we met this guy, King Ziggy, which we're going to have to go to his fight club at some point. The participant's glory and reward would be guaranteed. Ziggy tended to appear in front of the inn at the evenings. And the Karen. Heidi Tib was bested. The Witcher won the in tournament. Okay. Locations, nothing new. Characters. Uh, if Lobenden's non humans had been organized as a community, the dwarf Einar Gossel would have been the closest thing to its leader. Though the Skoyatel considered him a collaborator on a human leash, Einar tried to represent the non human minority as best he could, even if that meant mediating between its members and the Commandant. Furthermore, he ran something akin to a bookshop. Given its location in what was a complete backwater, his selection of titles was quite impressive. Video Vanti. I don't know why we have a, a a thing in here for him. He doesn't. He's not an important character. There's no quest related to him, as far as I know. Maybe it comes up later. A truly enterprising man, the merchant Fiero Vanti had found a niche that produced for him a decent income. Though his specialization was extremely narrow, this was the very key to his success. For the secret of commerce is to be the exclusive provider of a certain category of goods or services. Thus, Firo, 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 Firo was he was still in business despite his forced uh, stopover in Flotsam. What is his specialization? He just had like formulas, right? Some of the people have formula. Louis Merce. It was a typical example of widespread bureaucratic nepotism. It was rumored that he had outright fled Vizima after bringing some unsavory troubles down upon his head. His cousin Lorito then granted him a comfortable posting in Flotsam, and Merce saw this, <laughs> the gis, as his second chance. A lot of typos in this game, apparently. Nobody was surprised that Triss knew Sheila de Tanserville. A more attentive observer would certainly have noticed the chill in their greetings, as well as Triss's evident dislike of her elder colleague. Where is Sheila de Tanserville's uh, character thing? Why don't we have one? Oh. Oh, it's down here. John Natalis. Uh, so this is like the army man that they were talking about who can restore order. The army's behind him, but he's not a, he's not a, a high-born person or a politician. But some people want him to rule instead of full test or whoever else, uh, Baron Kimball. It seems that every other person you meet took part in the last war against Nilfgaard. Such are the times in which we live. Yet we best remember those who made their mark in the analysis of the co that conflict. John Natalis, Constable of Temeria, is one such person. Supreme Commander of the Cumulative Forces of the North at the Battle of Brenna, Natalis fought valiantly, commanded wisely, and contributed vastly to their victory. Despite being outnumbered by the enemy two to one, and he did not rest on his laurels after the battle. Instead, he pursued the foe, routing him nec nuntius claudis, or nearly so. 
I guess completely is what that means by context, leaving but a few stragglers to flee beyond the Yuruga. John Natalis was honored richly for his deeds, and a square in Rizima now bears his name. After Foltis's death, Natalis temporarily served as Regent of Temeria. So he does serve as Regent right now. Oh my gosh, there's a lot for a Sheila. I know from experience that magicians are not above lusting for power. Among sorceresses alone, there are many whose ambition leads them pull strings, moving kings and other mighty forces of this world. To command the elements in spectacular fashion, summon genies, bend fate, dictate royal proclamations, or at least to force others to eat chicken with cutlery. <laughs> that is why magicians such as Sheila de Tanserville, known as the Koviri Loner, stood apart from the others. Lady Sheila was not known to interfere with politics, at least not visibly, instead dedicating her days to research. Strict, calm, and collected. Unlike other sorceresses, she did not display her feminine charms, instead wore that hideous hat. Nor did she flirt with men, jiggling her posterior before them at every occasion. Though, and I must remain true to myself here, the world would undeniably be a much more poorer place without typical sorceresses. The reason for Sheila de Tanserville's presence in a backwater town like Flotsam was initially a mystery, yet it quickly became clear that she had come there because of the Cairn, a river monster. Her sorcerers gladly used the organs of exotic creatures as ingredients for magical preparations, and Sheila was no exception. Um, superb leather trousers, right. Uh, I think what I'd like to do now is read these books that I have on me. Here we go. Oh, when did I get this? The Arrakis, a study. Arachnids are lone hunters. They patiently lie and wait for their prey in order to kill it, with one swift strike when it appears. The same is true for the Arrakis, a huge creature that took a liking to the riverside forests, becoming their undisputed king. As ruler thereof, the Arrakis will not share its territory with any other hunters, witchers included. Also, the rites of Midae. Midaeity, or Midsummer, is the day of the summer solstice and marks the beginning of the first month of summer in the Elven Solar Calendar. Elves believe that all things under the sun occur in cycles. After Midaeity, or maybe it's just Midae, Midi, Medit, Midite, the days grow shorter and the dying commences. The last until the winter solstice. Summer shrines erected on this day give praise to the sun and life while acknowledging death's certainty. Spells that protect living things and draw power from the sun's heat are particularly strong near these set of shrines. Witches use them to bless crops and summon fire. Even godless witchers bow before summer shrines to augment the intensity of their signs. Good. So we'll be on the lookout of that. For that. The power the sorcerers can command is commonly called magic. In the opinion of a certain sorceress I'm acquainted with, magic is chaos, an art and a science, a curse, a blessing, and progress. All of those things, huh? However poetic it may sound, it is hard to find a better simile. Everything depends on the person that uses that power, of course. Still, it is a fact that it can be used to achieve things not possible to normal humans. The Witcher signs are also a form of magic, but sorcerers look at them with disdain, since they cannot be compared to the forces the sorcerers themselves command. Without magic, our world would certainly be less interesting, and many beautiful things would be forgotten. By the way, these books you notice don't weigh anything. I think that's because in The Witcher 1, by the way, if you read a book, it would say it. It said, you read this book. There's nothing like that in this game. If you don't remember the book, then you won't remember that you've read it. So I guess one way to know what books you've read are to just keep them all, and uh, and that way you know. I think I might sell the monster books and keep the other books, because I don't know if I'm going to remember that I read these. I do eventually want to read all of them. Dwarves are one of the elder races. Stocky and bearded with strong built bodies and low voices, they are distinguished for their height, which is lower than human. Of simple and direct manners, they are sometimes seen as grumpy, unkind, and greedy. I have to stress that my own opinion of the dwarves is by no means similar to the latter part. I only cite it here to present the views of other people, even if they are dull-minded, hate-blinded buffoons. Mahakam, Mahakam is the dwarves' mountainous homeland, famed for its numerous mines where precious stones and ores are mined. Many dwarves also live in human cities, for that race usually adapts to new neighbors easily, something that cannot be unfortunately said about a large part of humanity. Despite vexations, persecution, and even bloody pogroms, the coexistence with dwarves goes a lot better than with elves. Their flair for trade and craft makes them excellent merchants, bankers, smiths, and armorers. Cool. Scoia'tael is a name used by the rebels fighting for non-human freedom. In the common tongue, it means squirrels. As some would have it, it is because of squirrel tails that adorn the rebels' caps, or from the forest boards they had to survive on. Scoia'tael formed units over a score strong. A score is like 40, right? Consisting mainly of elves, yet sometimes dwarves and halflings joined too. During the last war with Nilfgaard, the Scoia'tael fought on the side of the Empire, making diversions and great damage beyond our lines. 
Despite the provisions of the Peace of Sintra, many did not disarm and continued to fight, especially when it turned out that Nilfgaard sacrificed them in the name of peace and gave the unit leaders to the uh, Nordlings to be executed. My gosh. And then we have the Grand Triple. What's this about? Great Melitelli is, among others, the patron of love, marriage, fertility, nature, and abundance. Her cult came to be through the blending of those beliefs many different races and cultures held about these aspects of life. Melitelli's popularity never waned, and the phenomenon is explained in various ways. I think the causes are prosaic myself. The cult of Melitelli is a predominantly woman cult, and the goddess is, among others, the protector of women in childbirth. A delivering woman has to scream, and, apart from the usual yells and empty promises that she will never give her herself to another mangy man again, the woman has to call some deity for help. And Melitele fits the bill perfectly. Because women were delivering, deliver, and will be delivering, the goddess Melitele does not have to worry about a lowering of the number of worshippers. Alright, cool. Well, that concludes the reading I'm going to do for now. I think that should update some things in my journal, but we'll do that next time. Next time I will also... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do next time. How, how's my stash? I'm at 190 out of 300. I might go exploring outside of the city walls or something like that. Could be fun. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See you soon.